Dude, that's twice. Hey, two for two. I'll take two for two all day. But I'm happy with that. 432. I like it. That's uh, one of the fastest passes. Uh, we went 426 and 427 early this weekend, but then today, earlier today, we kicked the tires on that tune-up, so we put a little bit less in it, tried to make it go down the track, and it worked. That is cool, man. That's cool. Two it. for two, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This is our executioner engine. This is the next evolution past our enforcer long blocks. Uh, we started having failures with the uh, cast block down in the main web area that we just really couldn't improve on the enforcer engine. So um, next step was to kind of just start from scratch. So we went to the drawing board, started designing this engine about two years ago. Um, we started with a steel bed plate that uh, helps hold the whole bottom end together. We used six bolt mains in the bottom. Uh, 5 8 threads in the block, uh, so there's 42 studs that make up, up about a million pounds of clamp load between the steel bed plate and the block. Um, up from there, we really needed more structure and strength through the main web area, so we couldn't do that uh, without kind of getting some structure and strength to the outside of the block. So we started uh, with SolidWorks stress testing the block and loading it top to bottom so we could uh, determine where we could remove material, where we needed to add material, and ultimately come up with the strongest uh, weight ratio of the block that we could. Um, so that's how all the web design and everything is actually done on the side of the block. It's not all just for looks, it's all for function. Uh, when we got to the exhaust side of the cylinder head, we just really weren't getting much improvements from where we were, and ended up learning that uh, the way the valves or the way the ports were coming into each other and going out the same port in the cylinder head, it was very restrictive. So we split that up into a 12 port design. So each exhaust valve has its own port. Um, that gave us the opportunity to gain another 100 CFM on the exhaust side. So it flows about 375 CFM on the exhaust side of the head. Uh, we actually ended up patenting that design. Uh, so uh, that led us into having to make our own exhaust manifold, it just kept snowballing from there. Um, so we made our own exhaust manifold. Steed Speed uh, actually kind of designed that process of that exhaust manifold. Uh, he was so busy that he didn't want to do it, didn't have time to do it. Uh, so he just decided to let us use the patent and we redesigned, or we designed the whole exhaust manifold and machined it in-house, basically using his patent for uh, machining two halves of an exhaust manifold together and welding it together. So this whole intake manifold weighs 10 pounds and will take 200 pounds of boost pressure. Um, took us a week in uh, SolidWorks to, uh, to stress testing, twisting, uh, changing designs, adjusting, uh, until we came up with this uh, setup for the plenum. All the ribs in the plenum is all for function, um, really just to get the thing as lightweight and still hold the pressure as we possibly could. Um, so. Uh, we make our own connecting rods and our own pistons for this. Um, just about everything that you see here, the timing gear housing, everything was designed and manufactured in our facility, uh, all from scratch. Um, go to the dyno next week, and we, we should have capabilities of pushing 3,000, 3,500 horsepower fairly easily. Uh, we're not really going to try to go past that right now because most of the customers can't use it anyway, and there's just no sense in putting everything through the extra stress at this point. So...